Mr. Powers, Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Yes, sir, right away. The second time. Uh, save. <coughs> Excuse me. Oops. This time I was in that hallway because I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when that bellboy I saw earlier came out of the room. Of course, when I say room, I mean Juan Corrida's room. Now that I think about it, that bellboy did seem kind of out of place. Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. I mean... Thank you very much. That is all we need for now. Okay, cut him off. Huh? But I'm not done. There's still more. Let us first establish that the bellboy was truly Mr. Daykiller, then we shall see. Hmm, so the bellboy came out of the victim's room, and that bellboy really was the assassin. Then I think the answer is fairly obvious. That would be correct, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, I believe it's your turn to entertain us and make us laugh. Ha! 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 This is no laughing- this is no laughing matter! And what time was it? Ah, uh, well, I don't remember. The award ceremony ended around 8 p.m., right? And I went to Matt's room pretty soon after that. And then I came back. And then I went to the bathroom. So I guess maybe it was around 8, 10 by that time? You're not one for details, are you, Mr. Powers? Sorry. I thought I could maybe catch Matt and say my congrats. Are you sure it was the same bellboy? Yeah. And how could you tell? All the bellboys wear the same uniform, after all. Yeah, but they don't all have fucking stitches down the center of their face. Do they, Mr. Wright? But, you see, well, he had those stitches in his face. Ooh. So I'm sure it was the same guy that he was talk that was talking with Matt. Hmm. So which room did the bellboy come out of? The victim's room, huh? Yeah, the one with all the really pretty flowers and the teddy bears. It was Juan's room, all right. Words cannot describe how screwed I am. Hmm. Let's continue with the testimony, shall we? Now that I think about it, that bellboy... Oh. Um, so what exactly was so out of place about him? Right, right, right. Why the insipid grin? Maybe because I have no idea what damaging thing he's gonna say next to Edgeworth, Kun. Uh, well, the bellboy was empty-handed. Empty-handed? That bellboy was one of those room service people, right? But he wasn't pushing a cart and he wasn't holding a tray, either. You'd call that a little strange, too, wouldn't you? Hmm. I agree that it is a bit strange, Mr. Powers. But is it really that unusual for a bellboy to be empty-handed? What should I do? Should I let Mr. Powers... No! Try to pull a fast one! Keep... Do the bullshit! There's nothing strange or unusual about an empty-handed bellb! There really, really is. There really, really isn't, though? If you two are done being school children. <laughs> Bellboys are for room service. There is no reason for them to be empty-handed, ever. Your Honor, I ask that the witness previous statement be supplanted with this new one. Ah! I'm going to do whatever you can to make the bellboy look suspicious. I see. Very well. This court recognizes and grants the prosecution's request. Mr. Powers, if you could amend your testimony, please. Yes, sir. So you're saying it's suspicious for him to be empty-handed? Yeah, really suspicious. I mean, when I first saw that bellboy, he was holding a tray in his hand, and there was a bottle of juice and a wine glass on it. Juice? What kind of juice was it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was tomato juice, bro. If you come with some sort of reason as to why it would come out empty-handed, some sort of proof, then I think we can dodge the bullet on this one for now. Proof, huh? Sounds like another job for the court record! Yeah, so he had to be the assassin, I'm sure of it. <sighs> Excuse me. Please don't be so quick to judge. Uh, but it's kind of a powers family thing. Think of every person as a thief. That's weird. Well, I guess a thief and an assassin are both sneaky and silent. That's not the point, Phoenix. In any case, if that bellboy was the assassin, it would be very bad for us. But 
He really is the assassin. Yes, but you can't give in yet. If you want to prolong this trial for as long as possible, you're going to have to pull some cheap tricks on this one. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Uh, let's save first, actually. Okay. Is it the tomato- is it the tomato juice? Cause... It was- Yeah, it was in the room! Mr. Powers. I yes You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that the bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in caught up in believing it might be true. But but isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and then and, and, and. So, baseball has stitches? Are you saying that all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? <laughs> Phoenix! Phoenix no! Well, there's also, I mean, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. <laughs> oh, I probably could have presented this as well. This is the crime scene. There is a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Corrida's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of the table in the lower right corner... Eh? Oh. Yeah, this is a tray. Anyone can clearly see that it is a tray with a bowl of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corrida's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ah, but, but, that would mean the bellboy had seen and left the dead body in the room. No. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Corrida was already dead at the time? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? I, I blame you for leading me down this route. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. What is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? Is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say empty-handed? I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Ha <laughs> ha! What? That bellboy, he was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black, leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Shouldn't they? Even if they're not black leather gloves, shouldn't they wear gloves? Black leather gloves? Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Oh, boy, does this make the bellboy look really suspicious now. Alright, gotta focus. I can't get lax here. So what if you had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. That, were, that bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So? A football is made of leather. <laughs> are you saying that all footballs are suspicious because they are made of leather? <laughs> Phoenix! Phoenix, no! Phoenix, why? Why are you like this? <laughs> But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. It seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh yes, please tell us more. Hey, hey! Oh, his... Okay, there's more testimony. <laughs> Excuse me. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door just like that. Why is he British now? That's the judge. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. I had to take a massive shit. So the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room? Yeah, I kinda saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. 
And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we, Mr. Wright? Your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Did you excuse me? I may be a poor underpaid action star, and even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, I'm from the door of the bathroom with my left eye and sort of sneaky spy like. Ah! Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. <laughs> Gave something to the oh right to release. I said hold it. Um okay. Um okay. That's better. <clears throat> what kind of statement is that? Please elaborate and give us a few more details. Oh um, okay. I don't even remember the sentence. Hmm, I should probably only ask one question at a time. Oops. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Uh, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? <sighs> I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. On Guard's room, correct? So it could have only have been Mr. On Guard himself, I'd say. I mean, Miss Andrews was staying with him. And then, what did the Bilbo do after that? Oh, he after he, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing... Let's do the other one. Okay. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? Ha ha ha. If I remember what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure I really can't remember, Mr. Powers? I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. Edgeworth, no! When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Well, was it a bear arm, or was it an arm wearing the nickel samurai glove? Yes, yes, it was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I think it was... No. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. If, if I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. Do you mean like this bear? Let's press this and then we'll present the bear. A statue? Yeah, can't look like one, I guess. If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember, you know? It's like, looks like for this trial to proceed, I'm gonna have to come up with whatever this statue thing is and show it to him. You have to trust your instincts, instinct on this one and take a chance, Phoenix. Well, Mr. Powers, let's do some bullshit. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them. Objection! Even though we're supposed to be drawing this out. Uh, what was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, Twas I, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Y yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix, deep breath. Mr. Powers, the something you saw wasn't this item. <laughs> oh, hey, that's it. Hold on. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright. You really figured it out. I recall this found we found this at Mad on Guard's mansion. At the d d defendant's house! 
Oops. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. Shelly Day Killer assassinated Juan Corrida in his room, and then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. Then the bear being found in the Sun God's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Met on guard is Daykiller's client. Order! Order! I said order! Mr. Wright, this is a most unfortunate turn of events for you. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, Mia. No, it's alright. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Uh, I almost forgot he knew about it, too. <sighs> I think it is clear there's no need for us to continue this trial. I I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Y yes, Mr. Wright. There's still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to What are you trying to pull? Oh shit. And it's hard to juggling all of the voices. Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what question or point would you like to explore further? The bear itself. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. Why was it taken? The bear, Mr. Wright? This was found at Mr. Ongard's mansion. However, Mr. Ongard was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Uh, oh. I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It's not possible that it was Mr. On Guard who took this bear to his mansion. Why, that's very true. We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There's no way time-wise for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Whew. Disaster averted. It looks- DAMN IT! You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Rice. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at On Guard's mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time, he was the killer. Son of a bitch! Edgeworth, we're supposed to be slowing this down. You... Bitch face! Day Killer and On Guard were working together, so to speak. And Day Killer was hiding at On Guard Mansion as its butler. What a what a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to On Guard Mansion by Day Killer himself. What is the bear? Yeah, so Will Powers deadass said. This weird steampunk cyborg arm reached out to take the bear. I don't- I can't possibly imagine whose arm it was, though. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, On Guard had him do so. I assumed because it would have been bad had the police found it during the investigation. Is the suicide note in the bear? Because it's, I think they describe, because it has cuts in it, it's like a wooden block puzzle, isn't it? So maybe if you take it apart, the note is inside. <clears throat> well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to, I plan to explore, I plan to expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Power's testimony. Oh, nani? There's still another one? There is indeed, Your Honor. It's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. Oh, it's a repeat. Person received the bear. There was one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's weird cyber arm. As long as you don't know who it was that took the bear. Ah! 
What is it, Mr. What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Uh, I remembered who took the bear. Ah! Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but the arm. It <laughs> Samurai's arm, I swear it. You've got to be fucking kidding me! Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Order! Order! It looks like you've dug your own grave yet again, Mr. Wright. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took the bear, this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And as we all know, Matt on guard is the Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the defense, we've made that all the clearer. I mean, it could have been Adrian Andrews dressed in the costume. I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in his room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt on guard. I see no reason for this trial to continue, therefore I will hand down my own verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I? Yeah! Objection. I'm not supposed to- ah! There's only one way up for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe Mike's client is the assassin's client. Reason number one, he accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two, that very same figurine was found at On Guard Mansion. However, it's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is Day Killer's real client. I'm very tired and very sleepy. The real client? My throat hurts. Yes. Is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is Day Killer's real client, and therefore the real murderer? Uh... Adrian Andrews? Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Matt on guard for the crime. By wearing a spare nickel samurai costume. Ugh, he was me. Ah! Then, then the nickel sa- the nickel samurai's arm that I saw. Yeah, like I said, that could very well have been Miss Andrews. But what about Mr. On Guard? Do you please recall yesterday's testimony? The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right. Then, finding this figure at Mr. On Guard's mansion? It was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Is she here? Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there is no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell on guard did it. Yeah, I'm... Oh, damn it. This is to save Maya. This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order! 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 All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor, for the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even if, even if you must- even you must have thought it strange and wondered. Why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. 
The killer did specially bring that bear to on guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. Miss Adrian Andrews herself again! I see. Very well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Okay, I think this is a good place to stop. Yes, Your Honor. God, maybe we will end up finishing the game next week. Because I don't actually know how long the trial is. But this is a good place to stop anyway. I did say it right. Yes, good. Oh god, my throat hurts. Okay. Cool. Man, I, I thought we'd be doing this for another three weeks, but I guess we're good. The pace is starting to pick up. Maybe I was it's just because I was dumb and slow and had to go to the walkthrough so often. But oh well. So hopefully Blue will be back with us next week. So with that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that follow button if you wanna uh keep seeing cause God, what do I say again? I'm so out of it. So with that Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hit that follow button if you want to see more content like this. And if you want to support me, consider hitting that subscribe button, pledging to my Patreon, or donating via Streamlabs. The appropriate links for which in the description is down below. As always, your viewership is the best way to support me. I'll see you guys next week. Don't get to fuck that like button! Bye!